heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. Verse 15, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles. So I don't think I need to tell you, but this is the apostle Paul writing. And he's saying um, that it was shocking that God chose him to do this, yeah. not just mm -hmm. to preach the gospel, but he's the same God who took the, the gospel to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. That's us, I think, most of you. Yeah. <laughs> and he wrote half the New Testament. So I think you would agree that he's had quite an impact on his generation, mm -hmm. yeah. the rest of the world, all of Christianity, but he was a pretty unlikely choice for God to use in this. I wanna tell you a story about another organization who celebrates people that make an impact on the world in a positive way. This uh, organization is called the Nobel Committee. So you may have heard of it. They award the Nobel Peace Prize, which is a prize awarded for contribution for outstanding, uh, an outstanding contribution to humanity. And this prize organization is named for its namesake, which is a Swedish scientist named Alfred Nobel. So I think most people have heard of that. But what you may not know is that prior to establishing this endowment, with his name on it, Alfred Nobel was in the family business. His family manufactured weapons of mass destruction. That's right. The man who would leave the equivalent of $250 million in today's money, earned all that money, and spent his life manufacturing weapons of mass destruction. Does that shock you? It did me. And reportedly, he had no problem with what he was doing. He wasn't trying to change. He wasn't ashamed of what he did. Then one day, he was reading a newspaper and he came across an article that gave him pause. This article reported his death. Hmm. The reporter had mistakenly overheard somebody's last name and thought it was him. So they reported pretty ecstatically, they had celebrated. Wow. The merchant of death is dead, <laughs> but he wasn't. So upon reading this, he decided, this isn't the way I want to be remembered. Yeah. I don't want to be remembered by somebody, as somebody who contributed to death and destruction. I want to be somebody remembered as somebody who contributes to life yeah. and others that contribute to life. Yeah. When you meet Jesus, yeah. you immediately come face to face with who you really are. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Through Jesus, you can change your nature yeah. in this life and in eternity. Yes. Yeah. God loves to take broken and hurting things, mm -hmm. the things that people give up on, and turn those and transform them and empower them to change the world and advance Amen. his kingdom. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't give up, because your father has it. Amen. If you and the people around you aren't prospering, free, and impacting your community and the world for better, then the story's not over. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Woo! Good job, Mr. Banks. Also, congratulations, Kelly's wife. Yeah. Woo -woo. Uh, Good evening. If you'll open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 26, <laughs> verse 3. Yeah. The title of my sermon is His Peace Will Keep You Steady. Amen. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace yeah, whose yeah. mind is stayed on you Amen. because he trusts in you. Yes, the promise I want to bring to you tonight is Jesus is your peace. Amen. Amen. In the fall of 2016, we were in the middle of transition. My husband was retiring from the military. He had faithfully served our community and our country for 21 years, yeah. and it was time to move on. Yeah. After much prayer and deliberation, thank you, but I'm going to move fast. Yeah. After much prayer and deliberation, yeah. we thought the Lord was telling us it was time to move on, and we were going to go to CF&I. Mm -hmm. So early in the morning on January 9th, 2017, filled with excitement and hope, our family loaded up all of our possessions and headed out in the moving van. So let me give you a little bit of backstory. At that time, Kelly and I had been married for 15 years, and we had moved 15 times in 15 years. Oh, wow. And in those 15 years and 15 moves, we'd sustained almost no damage to any of our property or possessions, and we didn't think this time would be any different. 
So the dean's office at CFNI had assured us that when we arrived at CFNI, that we would have some helpers to unload. <laughs> yeah. Now, these helpers weren't experienced or skilled, but indeed, they were helpers. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first pieces of furniture that came off the moving truck was a tall, skinny piece of furniture, a dresser. And I have to tell you that most of our furniture really has no monetary value, but some of it has great emotional value, yeah, like this piece. The reason why is in 2001, when Kelly and I got married, one of the first things we did as a married couple was to refinish and restore this piece of furniture. So the next thing you know, I see this guy dollying <laughs> my dresser, my favorite dresser, down a sidewalk, going the wrong way with a dolly. And the next thing I know, it dumps off the draw dolly and it lands with a crash on the sidewalk. I'm immediately upset. Yeah. But within a few minutes, Jesus comes and gives me his peace. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that week, we had lots of more opportunities <laughs> <laughs> to be filled with Jesus' uh, peace. <laughs> one of my sons got an ear infection, followed by the stomach bug, and at one point in time, his fever spiked to 102.5. Hmm. I'm not going to lie, I was a bit frazzled. But once again, Jesus came and showered yeah, us with on. his peace. Yeah. Come on, that's good. Still that same week, one of our toilets decided to die. That meant four people were using one toilet, which isn't that big of a deal unless everyone needs to go or <laughs> unless someone gets a stomach bug. And yeah. as I just said, one of us did, so that complicated matters. Then the final blow came. We had an apartment with some issues, and we were going to be forced to move again. Oh, wow. The apartment that they gave us had a cockroach infestation. Oh, no. Now, I'm not talking about like seeing a cockroach here and there. I'm like, here a cockroach, there a cockroach, everywhere a cockroach. <laughs> There's a lot of things I can tolerate, no. but cockroaches just aren't one of them. No, no. I began to panic. But a balm of peace dropped into my heart, and like floodwaters covering the earth, all my negative emotions got bound up by peace. I felt Father giving me an invitation to walk in his peace, and I accepted. Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, yeah. and he lives inside of you. Yeah. No matter how much you lose your cool, don't you ever lose your peace. Yeah. When God calls you to do something, no matter what circumstances come your way, you must put a stake in the ground and stand firm in what he has told you to do. Amen. When you are doing what God has told you to do, his peace will be steady in you. Thank you. Thank you. Four minutes goes pretty quick, guys. Yeah, good job. All right.